Oh, wait, wait. I want to get a better angle. Hold on. <laughs> You're sure about it? I this. trust you. You, tr you trust me? I trust you. Okay. Go for it. All right. All right, guys, we're back at Sleepy Hollow. We're at the Instruction Center again, Sprecker's Lair. Mm -hmm. Love this <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you remember the playing lesson we did here not too long ago, right? Yeah, if someone comes down to the playing lesson with you, what's involved? So we're gonna go around it. I'm gonna pretty much coach you around the course, except for we're not gonna talk about technique. Mm. We're, we're gonna take the game that you have, and I'm gonna manage you around the course. So there, we didn't work on our swing. This is gonna be the other side of that. We are gonna work on our swing. We're gonna dive deep into it. Kevin's got some, some toys he wants to I know, show I can't us in wait. there. So we're gonna see what we can do and see what it's like taking a swing lesson with Kevin now, something that we haven't done yet. So let's head inside and meet up with him. Here he is. Hey guys. The man you met. How are you? What's up Kevin, how are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Nice to see you guys. All so good? We're, we're good, we're back. We're back for that, that swing lesson. Yeah. You know, something we didn't do, we just did the playing lesson. Right. Navigating the course. Right. So something a little different, but before we get started, we got something for you. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? Right. Oh, how awesome is that? That's cool. Right? Look at that. This has been my biggest uh, I think that's rotation. improved my game right there. Beautiful. Right. I appreciate so it. So wear proudly, sir. That's cool. I will. Thank you very much. <laughs> you got it. That's great. Yeah, cool. All right. So we got to get you. Let me put the net down. Let me get you to warm up first. Okay. All right. So, Kevin, while he's warming up, yeah. I see a ton of equipment here. Yeah. Why don't you take us through a little bit about what we're going to be using today and then how you use this in your lessons with your students? All right. So, we got launch monitors. Um, I got the Foresight launch monitor, which we're going to use to measure the club. Mm -hmm. So, and more importantly, we're going to measure lie angle and see some club fitting stuff too, but we can measure face rotation, which is what I like about it. Um, and then we're also going to use TrackBand to track the ball. Yeah, I see that so you're we'll using those. the two together. Yep. I got them both. They're both really good. And, you know, the TrackBand will measures the ball, calculates the club. Foresight measures the club, calculates the ball. When I've compared them together, uh, the, the ball information on, on the Foresight dead on with TrackMap. Mm. Uh, and the club information, the measures are slightly different, so it's a little bit different there. So, uh, And then we're gonna, he's standing on a swing catalyst, which the swing catalyst, there's two plates. There's a balance plate, so we'll measure his pressure, how he, how he uses pressure going back and forth. And then underneath that, there's a force plate. So we're gonna measure how much force he applies to the ground. Force is important because it helps you generate speed. Yeah. We're all about speed, right? Mm, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so we got those two things. Then we're gonna use uh, my 3D K-Vest system. So we're gonna measure the body and how the body turns, bends, and tilts, mm -hmm. the sequence things happen, the speed that things happen, the timing that things happen. So we're gonna kind of coordinate all three things and see how the ball reacts to what forces he generates how the forces affect how his body moves, how his body affects how the club moves. We're gonna yeah. use a video to see the club and, and, the, and the foresight. So kind of everything's synergistic there, so it's kind of a complete assessment. Uh, and then one little last piece we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do an assessment of him that, that will take some measurements, uh, which will help build the blueprint for how his body is actually designed to work versus how it's working. Uh -huh. gotcha. And I find a lot of times players come in, yeah, everyone's taught to do something, something mm -hmm. a certain way or they read something in a magazine or they watch your podcast right. and they wish to do this but their body isn't designed to move that way so they're working against themselves they're working against themselves to make it hard so gotcha. you, you know so you find people that like all of a sudden they get into a groove and they feel pretty good about it, it might be for a hole or for a round or for a week but then yeah. all of a sudden they fall off the rails and what happens is their their timing gets good, so they figure it out, yeah, but, but yeah. they can't sustain it. I sure, you guys have been out there playing, and all of a sudden you get a three or four hole stretch. You're yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, I got it. I got you this game. Yep. I'm going to shoot 72 today, or I'm going to break 70. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you hit one way out to the right, you hook one to the left, yep. and, yeah. and now you're struggling to break 90. Yep. <laughs> that goes along with some of this this stuff. Um, it's a bio, It's called Bioswing Dynamics. It was designed by Mike Adams and EA Tischler. 
It sounds like it's a lot of data at your fingertips when we're all done it's, running through it. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll know how you're supposed. You might not know how to do it, but you'll know what you're supposed to do. Right. And we'll give you some drills on how then to you do it. The drills are then the, the second there. Okay. One of my big goals for next year, I, I call it simplifying my swing, but I'm experiencing exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Sometimes I'm on and sometimes I'm way off. And I think it's that I'm, I'm relying a lot on timing to make up for a lot of my rotation problems. Right. Yeah. And, and tech gets a bad, you know, a, a bad vibe. It was like, oh, it's going to get, you know, all this tech is going to get so technical. And actually it's the opposite. All this tech helps you get not technical. Right, because you're, you're not guessing anymore. You're not guessing, you're, you're, you're yeah. simplifying. I'm using the tech as feedback so you know if you're doing it right or you're wrong, and then you can take that feel and, and go out and practice it on your own, and then we come back and just measure it again. So the tech's gotcha. here just to measure what you're doing, and then, we, and then it helps you generate feels, and then the feels that you take to the course. I say, I love it. Let's For get hooked you. up. Let's, what do you say we hook this guy up? Let's get him hooked let's up. Get, let's hook him up. He's ready to go. <laughs> He's ready. He's warmed up. Let's go. I'm ready to go. Let's so now this system is called the K vest. This is the K vest system, and it's it's going to track its body in three degrees of motion, um, and then it tracks the sequence of things too, and the speed of things. Grab that in front. Mm -hmm. and connect that. Tell me if that's pretty tight. It's tight. Below the belt. Below the belt. Okay. Okay. So that's going to measure. That measures your hips. So okay. that measures bending and tilting and turning. So this measures. Does. Yes, okay. and I know this glove is beat up, but it's the end of the season. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Then. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so today I'm I'm curious. Anytime I miss right, which is my miss, I just want to know why. I want to see why. Hopefully I can see it. Is that something hopefully we'll be able to figure out? Oh, he'll figure it out. Oh, he'll figure it out. <laughs> so we got all your measured data. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna figure out about you. Okay. okay so I'm gonna take some measurements. Forearm is 14 and a half. Upper arm is 14. So this is slightly longer. Okay. Stop flexing now. Yeah. Can <laughs> do biceps or not? Yeah, no. no. Okay. We've got a lot of information here. So when I'm hitting the, when I'm striking the ball on the toe of the club, there's physically no way to hit a straight jump. It's, yeah, because it, even if your path and face were zeroed out, yep. if you hit it on the toe of the club, the toe, the, the club's gonna twist, right? The club's gonna do this, yeah, right. and that makes the ball hook. So you've heard of a toe hook. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because this goes back, when this goes back, the ball goes this way on the face. So it tilts the ball to the left and you hit a hook. So if I point this right at you, I'll point at the camera. Okay, that's a that's a that's a flush lie angle. If I just raise the toe of the club, where does that start to point? Oh, yeah. Points to the right. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't turn the face. I just raised the handle up. Right. So if you get steep coming on your downswing, where the where the toe of the club's digging into the turf, your face is going to point to the right. Well, what's your reaction going to be? Well, I'm going to try to close the face. Right. Right. The opposite is if it comes in too flat face points left, then you're gonna to try to open it. Yeah. That's why when you're on uneven lies, we go back to the playing lesson stuff, when the ball's above your feet, face points to the left, you're gonna hit it left, you gotta got off center that. Got it. But when you're on a flat lie, you don't wanna to have to adjust for that. But as, as an athlete, you'll, you'll sense that and you'll start to make adjustments. Sure. Which is where the club fitting was so important. And so now we gotta figure out, you know, why is your club face pointing to the right? Yeah, and what's going on. So we're, we're going to take a look at some of the data here now. Love it. Okay. okay. So, so this is your pressure data. This is that where your feet are on the ground at address. What, what percentage of pressure, not weight, is on your left side versus your right side? Mm -hmm. How far apart are your centers of pressure? This is the center of pressure on your left foot, the center of pressure on your right foot. So we know you're a center to a left post golfer from the evaluation. Right. So the, you know, when you take it back, Here's your backswing. You see the weight shift. So you get maximum weight, maximum pressure on your right side here, about 92%, which is about right. Left arm parallel is about where you want maximum pressure. Okay. The problem is you get too much back there. <clears throat> One of the things we noticed when you did the test, you weren't very stable on your right side. Right. Well, you've overloaded, in my opinion, your right side. Mm, okay. 
so it's not very stable. You can almost see your right knee kind of goes outside your right foot there. So that, that affects how we turn. So your body actually starts to, if you look at your spine, you're almost backward bending. So your downswing is actually, it's not too bad. The problem is, is you're out of position going back. So this next graph here is peak speed for each, each area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think, you think his ego's a little big now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here, you're in perfect peak speed sequence. So okay. your, your hips read max speed first, then your chest, then your arm, and then the club. Pretty good. Cool. These are the speeds that they're moving in, in, in degrees per second. They're also pretty, that's, yeah, those are pretty bad. high numbers. These are tour ranges, and you're, you're right in there for hip speed tour range. A little low on the chest, low on the arm, but we know that because you don't transition properly. And then, too and much then you're really high on the hands because you have to. Because you have to, uh, to catch up. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if you weren't strong, that number wouldn't be so high, mm -hmm. right? And this is where we're saying if we get things in, in, in you know, we, we can actually gain some speed here. Yeah. There's some speed gain going gain on. Gain speed, you like hearing that. Love it. So your transitioning is okay, so you actually can play decently. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah. You're okay. You don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> but but if, if the timing of things were a little bit better, you'd suck less. Yeah, I like that. And you'd actually generate more speed. Mm -hmm. And it would also affect some of your club numbers. You won't hit down on it as much. Um, you won't take those gigantic divots that we've seen you take. Uh, but, and then your dispersion will come a little better. But more importantly is now you know why you hit the shots to the right. So when things go off, you're able to correct. Yeah. You don't know how to correct yet because I haven't told you, but at least you know why. All this information that we're seeing, it's a lot of information, but what it comes down to is I just got to show you how to use your legs better and you're going to be a better golfer. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's where the tech comes in. Yeah, there's a lot of information here. It's, it's like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Right. Well, we just sifted through 90% of it and figured out all we got to do is get you to figure out how to use these better. Yeah. And that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. So we're not, I'm not gonna talk about you changing the direction of your hands. We're gonna use your legs, which are gonna affect how you use your hands. Yeah. And change your swing That's direction. Wild. See how we took all that and just found what was wrong. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. No guesswork. Yeah. So now, right. comes, now comes the fun part, the work. So now we're balanced. So now we got our legs under us, and now we can try to use our legs properly. If you shift your weight, your hands shallow out. People who don't shift your weight, the hand goes out. Got it. And so, so the fix for the over the top move is using your legs better, not trying to just not drop trying. it in. So All right, so I'm finished with my K-Best you know, analysis here. And let me tell you something. There's a lot about my swing, Kevin, that I didn't even know that I was doing. It's, it blows my mind to see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. So tell everyone what I'm doing wrong here. Well, let's do, talk about what you're doing wrong. Okay. Because that's, I think that's important too. Sure. So, so you, actually your posture was there very good. Mm -hmm. right? And your setup was good, except for you were out of balance. Okay. Yeah. So because of you, were, you were out of balance, which means you're, you were on your toes too much, you struggled with rotating in your backswing, so you swayed too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got outside, that got you tilted. Because you're on the outside of your foot, you couldn't push off properly, so you ended up using your upper body strength to, to start down, which got you a little bit on the outside. Mm -hmm. Then, as you did that, your legs went forward, so you eventually got to your legs, and you're able to uh, kind of save it. So it wasn't a total fail. I mean, some people, they start, they just kind of stay back and go that way. Right. You actually saved it. The problem is, is you, you can't save it all the time. Exactly. Okay. So what we worked on is we, we got you more balanced set of dress, taught you to rock back and forth, change your pre-shot routine a little bit. Mm -hmm. then, well, then from there we taught you not to freeze your hips in your backswing, but actually change how your hips move. Instead of them going this way, we got them to rotate going back. Yeah. Then, we, then your transition was to feel a little bump with your hips, and when you bump your hands lower down. And the last little piece, which was hard for you, was actually to let your right arm straighten. You kept going like this, but this wouldn't straighten so you right. can't get to the ground. You got yeah, you gotta let it straighten. Your right arm straight at a dress. Mm -hmm. But we need to get it back to straight. It, it's not completely straight by any time. It needs to be in the process of straightening. So now you're gonna rotate a little bump and then you know straighten your right arm, and that's gonna get you to shallow out and swing a little bit more to the right. If what blows my mind is there'll be days where I'll go out there and I, I'll be just on my game. I'll shoot an 83, an 84. For me, that's very well beating my handicap. Right. Then there's days I'll go out there and I'll shoot a 93, 94. Is it as simple as I wasn't as flexible that day, I wasn't as warmed up, 
I'm not, just everything just went out the window. It could be something where, one, your short game was on on the okay. 4 or you're putting better. Yep. But if you were hitting it better, you were, you were, you were just saving it more often that time. Your, your timing was better. And that's no way to play golf. No way to play golf. Right. You, you, you don't want to rely on timing when you play. Sure. You want good body motion, good sequencing to produce good timing. Mm -hmm. You don't want timing to, to be the, you know, the goal here. Yeah. So, and that's where most people are, is they rely on timing, where one day they're good and one day they're bad, like right. we talked about before. Right. If your body motions are good, like tour players, they work on it every day, they've got good body motion, they don't rely on timing. So when they're off a little bit, their misses aren't as bad, they're able to scrape it around and shoot, you know, a bad round for them would be 72. Right. You know, for the rest of us, we can scrape around and make our, our bad round an 84. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you were on, your good rounds would be sub 80 now. Mm-hmm. Instead like of your good rounds that. being instead of your good rounds being 84 and your bad rounds being 92. Right. I think we can drop it down a little bit by changing how you use your body. You heard it right there. Next season. That's our winner goal. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's this guy's turn. Ready to find out some things? I've been looking forward to this lesson for a while. Ever since we were actually out there on the course a couple months ago, I've been looking forward to getting back in here and dissecting it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Get them all suited up here. Do a battle. <laughs> battle against the huck. Yep. <laughs> so this is your last swing. These three graphs here are the amount of force that you put on the ground. Okay. So this is horizontal force, so how much you push to the right or to the left. This is, ver this is rotational force or torque, so how much, if you're trying to twist the mat, okay. that's how you would yeah. twist the mat. And this is vertical force, how much you push straight down on the ground, the ground pushes back. Um, everyone's gonna maximize in one of these categories. You're, you're a center post golfer, mm -hmm. so you're gonna have not too much horizontal, and you're a little high there. You should have some torque and a little bit more vertical. Um, the, the shape of the, of the graph is also important. I like how steep this gets, it means you push off hard. Same here, and then the timing of it, you always, your maximum horizontal, then maximum torque, then maximum vertical. That's the same for everybody, regardless of what pose. It's just a question of how much. Now, that's pretty good there. One of the things I notice is when you go back, so you don't get max pressure until your right side until you're at the top of your backswing. Okay. Which is late. Okay, when should max pressure come in? About left arm parallel. So you should be max on your right side here, and as you continue, as your upper body continues to wind up, your lower body should actually start transitioning. Okay. Back to the left. Then you get max torque here, which is actually the correct spot. You should get max torque, which is the twisting part. You're trying to rotate here, or left arm parallel again, that's good. And you get max vertical here, which is also good. Okay. So, so you save it again. Right, it, and that's right. why we're so relying on time. You're relying on timing. And now you're a center golfer, so again, you sh your hips, your left hip moves to the right too much in the backswing. Okay. So what I want you to do is in your backswing, I want your your left knee is going to kind of point towards the ball. Your right hip's going to go backwards. Yep. So I want your hip to, to get to a backswing point. Yeah. It's going to feel like that. Okay. Not good. Yeah. yeah. As you're going back, see how your legs start going forward there? Yeah, yeah. Now, when this finished calculating it, we'll actually, you actually see the pressure move. Right now, you're already pushing left, right? You're pushing off your left now, and then we see your body move. But that's what you want to see there with the transition. So the fact that you can't see the ball is actually helpful now. Because if you start hitting shots out to the right, you freak out. Yeah. I've lost you. Right, right. I know you're going to struggle with, with contact when you make a change like this. So, it's, so the first thing I'm saying is it's okay to miss hit it. Mm -hmm. It's normal. You keep, you know, so don't judge the swing on the contact. Judge the swing on did you feel your transition change? Okay, and do it at, a, at, at, a, at the fastest speed possible where you can do it. It might mean a 40% speed swing or a 60, I don't know, you'll tell me. Right. But uh, you don't have to go full speed here. Just feel the transition. Yeah. That was a good transition. And I'm not saying you gotta go hours and hours of beating balls. If you spent, if you did three sessions a day of five minutes working on this, 
in a mirror. Don't hit a ball. Okay. It shouldn't take you very long to do it. I like small, short practice sessions every day versus long practice sessions once a week. Gotcha. I think if you do something every day, you learn it faster. Right? All right, so I came into it telling Kevin there's a couple things that I had in my mind, preconceived notions, but um, that's where I love all this data because it doesn't lie. So we were able to take a look at it and, and what do we find? Well, we saw it. you were set up a little too close to the ball, mm -hmm. um, but the main thing was your backswing, your, you, were, you weren't transitioning until your arms got to the top of your backswing. Right. So then it was hard for you to get everything in sequence properly. So we, we did a couple of things. Oh, and then your hips weren't working properly. You were moving your hips too much to the right. You were a center post golfer. Yes. So we tried to work on both at the same time and that was hard for you. Right. Which isn't uncommon. Yeah, like one so, swing thought. So, so yeah. we broke it out into two things. We, had you, we said, let's focus five swings on keeping your pelvis feeling more centered to you felt left. Mm -hmm. And then let's do five swings working on your transition. And then we went back and we tested it. We saw on the KVS that your transition got better when you focused on your transition and your hips stayed more centered, but your transition suffered when you thought about your, your hips. So for you to go home and practice in slow speed, like I said, do about three, five minute sessions a day, every day, versus just doing it once a week for a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, and focus on, go five swings thinking about your hips, five swings thinking about your transition. Use a mirror, you don't have a K-Vest, so you can use a mirror to, and you can see it. Yeah. And then what you can do is, is alternate. Go think about your hips, think about your transition, go back and forth. Uh, do it at the slowest, at the fastest speed that you can possibly can do it. Might be 40%, might be 20%, might be 80. Yeah. And then as you continue to do it, I think you'll see you can do it at 60 or 70 and then 80. And then you can start to introduce a ball into a net. Right. And then if you can hit a ball into a net properly, then you can start to go outside and hit a ball. But for right now, I think going without a ball with no stress, yeah. the ball does, focus on each one individually and then start to kind of mix them in a little bit. I think you'll start to see a change. Okay. So it's good for, and, and it's okay for me to stay away from hitting balls for a little while while I work on this. It's an uh, advisor. Yeah. Because I, I see that a lot. I see a lot of guys go for a lesson, they feel great, yeah. and then they go out on the course, they're like, I don't know, I can't do what this guy told me. Yeah. Because they're immediately trying to put in the play. Not only are they trying to play, not trying to hit a ball, they're trying to hit a ball on a course. Yeah, towards so, a target. Towards a target. And, yeah. So your body's gonna go toward it's gonna go what it knows to do. Right. However, it's trained. So we gotta retrain your body to feel comfortable when it's under stress. So a ball can add stress. Yeah. And then adding flight can add stress, and then putting a, you know, on the golf course even adds more stress. So let's let's take away the stress. You know, Jim McLean has something called the elimination theory. If you're struggling on the course, get off the course. If you can't hit it on the range, we'll take away the ball. Then take away, you know, you start taking things yeah, take away. Yeah, take away, go backwards, right? Okay, so for you, we're just we're going to take away the course because it's winter time. Right. We're going to take away the flight because it's a little bit because I, I don't want you to see it. So we're going to hit into a net. I still think you shouldn't even hit into a net yet. Let's, like I said, let's let's just, just the let's motion. train the motion, get get comfortable with the motion. How long is it going to take? I don't know. Right. That that's the unknown. Everyone's, you know, that's your talent level. Right. Right. And how much time I put in? And how much time you put in? But I'm not looking. But for five it. minutes a day, a couple times a day. I mean, everyone can find five minutes. I think the hard part, people tell you, I can't find time to go to the range. But we're saying, don't even worry about that. Especially right now. if you're a golf junkie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, if people are in the area and they want to do this, they want to see that data. How do they get in touch with you? Best way is to go to my website, which is kevinsprecher.com. Uh, it's S P R E C H E R. Or hit me up on Instagram or somewhere. There you go. Kevin Sprecher Golf. Shoot me a note. Um, I'm here all winter, indoors. It's always 60 degrees here. I'll have a simulator here. Yeah. You can come up. Or you can send me a video. I'm actually going to start that service now where you can send me a video from two camera views and I'll take a look and then, you know, I can do it my best that way, but you can actually come into the, the, the uh, as one of my students calls it, the, the learnatorium <laughs> <laughs> and get on all the equipment and actually we can really diagnose and see what's going on. That's great. We all called right. it Sprecker's Playhouse. Spre yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just be prepared for that 2 a.m. message of my swing right. to you when I can't sleep and I'm like, fix me. No. When, when I wake up at 6 a.m., I'll, I'll, there you go. I'll read it. I'll <laughs> get my, but uh, I appreciate it. This has been like, like the playing lesson, like the fitting, it's all been so enlightening and now I feel like this is like the trifecta. We're putting it all together. Put it all together. Yeah. And then I have one more piece of equipment you haven't been on yet. Uh-oh. Teaser. We gotta get you on the Sam Putt Lab. 
That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, that, the, that's where the, the real strokes are sitting. That's right? the MRI for your putting. Okay. So we got to get you on that next. Possible Scotty Cameron's for us for Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yep. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Great yeah. stuff. Nice. We appreciate nice to it. see you guys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so another crazy informative session with our buddy Kevin Sprecker. You've heard us talk about it on the podcast a lot. We, we learn a lot using like the shot scope and we dive into that type of data and we see which shots we're not hitting well, but then trying to find out why. Right. You know, that's what requires this type of lesson. And this is like the trifecta. We did the, we did the uh, playing lesson, we did the fitting with Kevin, and now we've done this in-depth swing analysis using all of that great technology you guys saw. So it's kind of like becoming full picture. So we're gonna continue to work on it. We're gonna talk about the data from ShotScope each week right. in, the, in the podcast, and we'll see if we see improvement now that we're working Absolutely. on that. That's yeah, the key. That is. But uh, anyway, we want to hear more from you guys in the comments below. Let us know what else you want to see. Uh, we, we're planning out 2019. We've got a lot of videos coming up. We, whatever it may be, uh, more tough stuff with the playing lessons, the fittings, whatever it may be, we want to hear it because we're going to work it in for you guys for sure. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see everybody again in the next video. See you then.